story starts before the gun was born. In fact, when it was only a twinkle in the general staff's eye. In 1941, the desert was a place of experiment, a laboratory of war. The battle of the weapons was reaching a climax. Armoured tanks against armour-piercing guns which would win. To sum up then, it seems that the battle of armour versus armour-piercing shot has come to a stalemate. Stalemate. While our two-pounder and six-pounder guns can tackle any weight of armour we have yet seen in this war, it's certain that the enemy is going in for thicker armour and heavier tanks. We want a new gun, something that can pierce maybe five inches of armor and still have the essential lightness and mobility needed by an anti-tank gun. The general staff called its experts and they conferred. This was their task, to give the soldiers a gun that would be ahead of its time, to meet an enemy which as yet hadn't even been seen, something in the darkness of the future for which we must be ready. We designed the gun. They asked us for a piece weighing not more than 1,600 weight, with a caliber of three inches, firing a 17-pound shot at a high muzzle velocity. That meant a long, slender barrel and a muzzle brake for steadiness. It had to have semi-automatic action for quick rate of fire. We did the shot, solid for high penetrating power, with an enormous wad of explosive behind it. A shot like that has a hell of a kick. The carriage had to be strong enough to take it, but it had to be light and manoeuvrable. It was a neat job for a first go at it. The next thing was to see it made up in wood. Do you think the sights are high enough? Could be higher, and the hand wheels are a bit close together. Well, I think that clears the carriage for you, and brown hair can start on the pilot model straight away. Do you think the gun group will be ready? Listen, the ROFs will be ready before the trade's even tooled up. Finished breech block drawings dispatched CIA next week. Material specification is fixed. ROFs are proceeding on how I would like to see the gun drawing by Thursday week. Jig and tool committee must have all modifications of the DG is pressing for the blueprints of the gun drawing. Browns are asking for detailed mods of the training base. If the gun drawing is dispatched tomorrow, the gun drawing, the gun drawing, the gun. This is how a gun is made. First the brain, then the hand, and behind the hand, the accumulated skill of five centuries of craftsmen. The forging takes shape from the rough mass. The barrel begins to taper. The first 17-pounder gun lies somewhere inside that thick husk of iron. The forging must be tempered up to the job it has to do, otherwise it would burst at the terrific pressures it will have to undergo later. It's a slow, tricky job. Red-hot metal has its own ways and takes its own time. And time is the essence of the contract. Some new photos here, sir. The Henshaw factory in Castle. The tank park's empty. You remember they were doing the Mark IV? Yes, well, they're doing something else now. 
Listen to this. Informant 1721L, good connections, Wehrmacht officers, reports Oberst attached Henschel, boasted of new tank which would win the war. Armor twice as thick as existing tanks, it could travel under water, and he wouldn't be surprised if he could even fly. Pretty well ahead with it, too. DRA had better see these right away. And now we know it's being built. A new German heavy tank is now on the stocks. And so the War Office have told us that we must take six months out of our production schedule. Six months? That's an eye-opener. What about our jigs and tools? Hey, and you're still holding a design about twice a week. Does that mean going ahead before we've even got our test models out? Yes, that's our headache. What you've got to give us is guns. Gentlemen, I hand you over to the tender mercies of your chairman. Well, it looks as if we've been challenged. We have a date with a tank, and I propose that we keep it. axles from Baines Johnson for assembly. Delivery to assembly factories, eight for first week in November. Reference revised schedule for gun battle. We must have the gun by... 25 trails, free issue to Browns for assembly. 25 breech rings pass for inspection. Delivery to assembly factories, 25 per week for December. We can definitely promise the gun by the... A bit of difficulty with the breech block, we suggested. Which assembled cradles, Lakeham to Moresby. Delivery to assembly factories, 85 for January. We must have the gun. Delivery to assembly factories, 125 for February. 70 shields, free issue to Browns for assembly. We must have the gun. We must have the gun. We must have the gun. Jerry's well ahead with the Mark 6. MI says they've reached the test stage. Up. 
That's five inch plate, 350 yards. Next one's 425. There she goes. The next one's at maximum range. That ought to give them something to think about. It will. In August 1942, the first mass-produced 17-pounder gun came off the assembly line. In September, a trickle of guns began to fill the ordnance depots. In October, the trickle became a flood, and the flood was on the move. We had a date with a tank, and both the time and the place were becoming clearer. It has just been announced from General Eisenhower's headquarters that in the Medanin area, the enemy is using all his armor, including masses of the new Tiger tanks, in an all-out effort to drive the 8th Army out of its positions in the Marath line. It's the old story, old boy. These blighters always catch us on the hop with something new. And now they've pulled this Tiger tank out of the bay. What I want to know is, why weren't we ready for it? Target! Mark 6 tank! 12 o'clock! 12 o'clock! On! 700! 700! Set! Zero! 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 650! 650! Set! 600! 600! Set! 550! 550! Set! 500! Leading tank! This video has been produced to tell you about the Royal Artillery Heritage Campaign for a new museum. It explains why we need it, where it will be, and how we're going to achieve it.
Firstly, why are we doing this at all? In addition to property belonging to the individual regiments, we gunners have five great collections at Woolwich. Over 300 guns dating back to the time of Cressy in 1346 and spanning the whole period of time between, up to, and including the present day. There is a huge array of artifacts depicting the long history of the regiment. More than 30,000 books. The largest collection of guns in the world. A million documents, drawings, records, and other archive materials. The greatest single medal collection in the country, including 62 Victoria Crosses. And a magnificent collection of silver and paintings belonging to the mess, but nevertheless available for display. So what then is the problem? Well, the collections are presently stored in four separate locations. And this presents us with an access problem. Also, the current displays are difficult to understand. The sheer size of our collections has already outgrown existing accommodation. storage of these precious possessions has long been of great concern. It is imperative that we remove them from the threat of rotting and decay. We can no longer assume that the Ministry of Defence will support us. Having already taken a 30% cut in funding, we will shortly have to close the present museum. It has therefore fallen to our generation to preserve our heritage. Unless we act now, we will be forced to box it all up and store it 